Hello, I'm Denise McGowan Tracy. I'm the author and playwright of Eleanor's Very Merry Christmas Wish. And I'm so excited to be with you here today um, with both of the York County Libraries and the Appel Center for the Performing Arts. Um, happy holidays, everyone. Um, we're gonna read just a little bit of Eleanor's Very Merry Christmas Wish. Um, you'll see as we begin, it's the story of a rag doll who lives at the North Pole and her very Merry Christmas wish is for a best friend and a home of her own. And, and I can't think of a time um, when her thoughts of home and hope um, could resonate more. So here we go. Are you ready? Everyone ready? Maybe you have cocoa, maybe you have cookies, but let's start with a little bit of Eleanor, shall we? show you a little bit of the illustration by my good friend John Michael Downs. I hope you can see that that's Santa Claus there coming in from the barn with the reindeer. Chapter one, the North Pole is a magical place. Hi, it's me, Twinkle. I hope you're in the mood for a story because I'd love to share with you one of my favorites. Before we begin, I think you need to know a few things about me. I believe in Christmas and everything it involves. The gatherings with friends and families, the search for just the right gift to make someone smile, the food, the fun, and the magic. But of course I believe in all of that. I'm an elf and I live at the North Pole. Pretty cool, right? I love my North Pole family. There's Santa, of course, Mrs. Claus, Sprinkle, Sparkle, Clara, and all of the elves and the reindeer. Oh, and Eleanor, of course. She's not an elf, she's a rag doll. A most unique rag doll, and her story is very special indeed. She has lived with us at the North Pole for a very long time. It's a wonderful story, so where should I begin? Hmm. I know. How about I share some of the most special days that I remember? Yes, a typical day with Eleanor would find her just before lunch, peering out her window and, and waving. Probably it's Sprinkle and Sparkle who were hurrying through the fluffy snow from the workshop on the way to lunch. Sprinkle runs Santa's workshop and Sparkle is in charge of the wrapping. These are very important jobs at the North Pole. They would be especially happy today because Eleanor and Mrs. Claus made chicken pot pie for lunch. Mmm, Eleanor thought. Chicken pot pie and oatmeal raisin cookies with milk for dessert. Eleanor needed to be on her way too. Santa expected everyone to be on time when Mrs. Claus served her delicious meals. But Eleanor had to take one more peek out her window she loved the way the snow looked when the afternoon sun was shining. It was bright and, and happy and, and magical, just like everything at her home at the North Pole. Santa was magical and Mrs. Claus was magical. The elves were magical. Well, really, Eleanor thought with a giggle, it is the North Pole. Of course it's magical. Santa saw Eleanor in the window and smiled and gave her a wave as he made his way from the barn where he'd been checking on the reindeer. No matter how busy he was, Santa always arrived first at the table when Mrs. Claus served a meal. So with a final glance in the mirror to be sure her ribbons and her braids were perfect, Eleanor ran to the kitchen. Each and every day, it was the same. Ho, 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 Santa said as he stomped the snow off his boots. What is that delicious aroma? He walked into the cozy kitchen and gave Mrs. Claus a kiss on the cheek. Closely behind, Sprinkle came in and sat down at the end of the table with a big grin on his face until Sparkle said, Ahem, Sprinkle, that is Mrs. Claus's chair. Sprinkle jumped up with a surprised look on his face and said, oh gosh, it is? Every single day was the same scene and they would all have a good laugh as Sprinkle held out the chair for Mrs. Claus to take her seat. After lunch, 
Santa stood with his back turned. He thought nobody could see him. He grabbed a plate of cookies and said, well, one delicious cookie and then back to work. Sprinkle laughed and pointed and said, one cookie, Santa? As Santa headed out the door with a wink and a shh. Chapter two, Santa's workshop. Can you see? There's Eleanor in the midst of dozens and dozens and dozens of beautiful ribbons. Let's see what's happening. After lunch, Eleanor joined the fun with the elves in the workshop. Everything looks so bright and shiny and beautiful and the sound of the of laughter filled the air. The machines the elves used to make the toys were just as exciting as the toys themselves. The candy cane colored wheels would turn and then whoosh, out came a shiny new toy car. Over in the corner, the toyinator made a whirring sound and then whoosh, out came a brand new bike. Of course, not every toy was made by a machine. Many of them, especially the teddy bears, had to be made by hand. Each bear had to be as unique as the little boy or girl who received it. Sand and the elves had much to do to make wishes come true Christmas morning. This particular day was special indeed. As Eleanor entered the workshop, Sparkle asked, Eleanor, would you like to help with the gift wrapping today? Would she? Really and truly, Eleanor asked, gift wrapping? I've never wrapped a gift before. Do you think I could? Of course, replied Sparkle. I mean, really and truly. I'll teach you myself. The gift wrapping station exploded with color. Every single color in the world. Shelves and shelves of glimmering, shimmering wrapping paper. And ribbons, red and green and blue and silver and gold and purple and Eleanor's favorite, pink. Some ribbons were wide and some were skinny and some were sparkly with glitter and some curled and they all made the prettiest bows. Oh yes, wrapping presents next to Sparkle and the other elves was so exciting. Eleanor felt very nervous at first, but the elves reminded her that they had been wrapping gifts for a long time and that she would soon be just as efficient as they were. The elves were patient with Eleanor, teaching her exactly how to pick the right amount of paper, how to fold the paper, how to crease it, how to tape it, and then of course, how to flip it over to tie the bow. As the tower of gifts grew taller and wider, Eleanor looked at Sparkle and said, gosh, Sparkle, the gifts are so beautiful. Wouldn't it be great if nobody opened them and they could stay this beautiful forever? Hmm, well, they are gifts, Sparkle said. So it's what's inside that counts. Just like people, I'd say, Twinkle said. Hmm, just like people, Eleanor said. I, I guess, but I think it would be wonderful if on Christmas morning, a little boy or girl would take a few extra seconds to look at the pretty gift wrap and think about how someone took the time to make it look so special. Not me, Sprinkle interjected. I hope they tear the paper off really, really fast so they can see the toy we made for them. I agree with Eleanor, Sparkle said. I hope a child out there loves the beautiful wrapping when they see their gifts on Christmas morning and open it ever so carefully. And recycles the paper, of course, Twinkle said. Of course, they all echoed. Well, that's just a little bit of an introduction to Eleanor's very Merry Christmas wish. I hope that you'll maybe get an opportunity to pick up a copy, possibly at the library this season, or maybe your very own copy that can be under your tree. Um, there's a couple of ways for you to get it, and they'll have that information for you at the end of this. But we would love you to bring Eleanor to your home and hear all about her wish for a home of her own and, and hear how when she takes a little bit of action on that wish because as Sparkle teaches her, wishing isn't enough. You have to work for a wish to make it come true. You'll see how her story unfolds and how she learns that wishes really do come true. And I think that's so important this year. In addition to the book, um, you can also see Eleanor's story um, in a video recording 
of the live stage, stage production that we did in Chicago last year. It's a beautiful show with lots of wonderful music and beautiful costumes and sets. So one of two ways you can see this, but of course we hope you'll, you'll start with the book. If you choose to do the, um, the show, you can also buy one of our very merry gift boxes. And that does include a copy of the book and some fun party hats. And well, there's a couple of other things like this fabulous Christmas ornament and a reindeer ring toss game and all kinds of fun things. So I'm so grateful to all of my friends at York County Libraries and at the Appel Center for the Performing Arts. And we hope that this year you will find a way to bring Eleanor to your home. And on behalf of everyone here at Eleanor, um, please, please, please have a wonderful, safe, magical, and happy holiday season. And don't forget, make your wish. Thanks everybody, happy holidays.